We are back here in Hope Harbor, finally building for North American Porcupines again. Welcome everyone, it's been quite some time. I know it's been quite a long weekend without your good old buddy Leaf, but today we're finally getting back and getting started with our Moose Town main section. Yeah, so in the last episode we built for the Capybars, and the episode before that we built for the Jaguars, but before that we built for the Moose! And we finally started our um, Moose Town main section. And this section is essentially going to cover all animals found in Maine or previously found in Maine. It's a really fun section that I can't wait to get, like, you know, really rolling. And this part in particular I am so proud of. So you guys can probably guess from the title and from the title card and from the thumbnail that we're building for North American Porcupines. Now, if you guys are OG Hope Island fans, listen, drop a hashtag hope in the chat if you guys are. Uh, we originally did have uh, North American Porcupines. Uh, they were a really fun species to have before, but I kind of traded them away and they kind of made their way throughout the system. But still, we finally have them back and I can't believe it. It's so great to have them back because we're going to be building a really awesome habitat for them. If you guys remember the old habitat, it wasn't really the biggest. In fact, it was kind of tiny. Really tiny, actually. It wasn't that good. But still, today, we're getting started on a really awesome habitat for these guys. Really, really awesome. So, North American porcupines, as you guys can probably guess, are very arboreal creatures. They require a lot of climbing space. They require a lot of climbing frames and oftentimes can be found sleeping. They're very, very chill animals. But when they're not sleeping, they're climbing all around. They're trying to, like, climb up trees and climb down trees, looking for food and stuff. So that's exactly what we need to simulate in this habitat. So in order to kind of build up the style of the habitat, I wanted to make sure that we have realism at the forefront. This habitat, listen, I've been slacking a little bit with, like, our backstage realism and stuff. Uh... Really haven't been feeling it recently, but I figured for this one, I wanted to go ham with it. I wanted to make sure that we have this be the most realistic porcupine habitat that we could possibly have. And what better way to do that than doing a fully exposed backstage? Essentially how this habitat would work, you can see me building it right there. I have this exposed glass area right over there. You can imply that it'd be one-way glass, and it's just a really awesome way for the guests to view the porcupines when they're being held backstage or if they're kind of like chilling you know when it's raining out or something they don't want to be outside they have full control to kind of make their way back indoors and you can see from the little porthole behind there i show it right there right there yeah uh that they can make their way back in there as well so that's what we have going on over here and it's just a really fun habitat nonetheless so you guys can probably tell i already established a nice color scheme in here very much going with that like classic national park kind of look with like the nice dark green with like the beautiful like chocolate browns really awesome stuff over there i was really excited to get building for this and you can tell i'm doing very much piece by piece framework over here i really want to have custom frames have custom doors and stuff like that so that's exactly what we do over here and i do doors both for the indoor and the outdoor i figure we could make like a little bit of a food prep section back here maybe we could have it be like a little closet or something and the porcupines are able to you know have all their free roam back there and also making use of the already created fences that we had from before again this is something that i always try and stress whenever you guys are building sections always make sure that you either kind of reformat stuff that you already have or even reuse it that's totally fine as well uh just as long as you kind of keep those same vibes throughout the section it's always great to have and again here i am reformatting these pieces once again kind of making a little bit more of a kind of like fully enclosed section of that wall right there so i have that going on right there i kind of pencil it down right over there and it looks really good in the end super awesome piece right there it's super easy to build your own custom doors and stuff like that own custom doors own custom fences and it's so worth it to do it at that so there you go kind of making off this habitat making sure that you know i kind of section off those sections where the porcupine would be able to escape uh, we have two porcupines in here. Their names are York and Kittery. Uh, I'm kind of naming all of our Moose Town, Maine animals out of towns and cities from Maine. I used to live up there for about four years for college, and it was one of the best times of my life up there. Really beautiful, really beautiful state if you guys ever get the chance to go up there. I really do suggest it. A couple of pretty 
nice zoos. Uh, one really nice zoo, one kind of alright zoo. But I do suggest you guys go up there and check it out nonetheless. It's super nice up there. Even for native wildlife, you are bound to get a ton of it. But essentially, that's kind of like the whole inspiration of me moving up here to Maine. Me kind of be building this entire section off of Maine and stuff like that. So that's what we're working with over there. And I felt like something was missing from this building over here. So I want to do some kind of a lining some stone lining down below a foundation really if that makes sense so we kind of do that over there we kind of lay that down and we do a few little rock pieces behind there we do the same on the other side we don't really do it on the like sides itself because you don't see it uh so that's totally fine right there and i kind of pencil off these sections over there with some nice wood beams you know making sure it looks nice uh and yeah we kind of make our way throughout here and get started on a little bit more molding I thought we were going to get started on the actual climbing frames itself, but no, I have jinxed myself. I have jived myself. I have completely made an utter buffoon of myself. So making our way throughout here, I am reusing these uh, roof pieces from the moose barn. And I really want to have this section be utilizing as much of these pieces as possible. The corrugated stuff is really nice and really cheap to get on the real world itself. So we're kind of making our way throughout here with all of that and making sure that we make this look as beautiful as possible. Really not beautiful, but really as cohesively themed as possible. So that's kind of what we do over there. And we have it so that, you know, the uh, porcupines aren't able to climb out. Keep in mind, porcupines are really good climbers. So we got to make sure that they will not escape their little section. So we also have this over here as a nice little overhang. Supposedly, you would only come into this section when the when porcupines are indoors, and it's probably when it's raining or snowing out. So that's exactly why we have that section off over there right there. Not only because it kind of worked out that way and I was kind of lazy to do a custom roof, but also because that's where you would kind of go if it is raining, it's nice, it's um covered. That'd be a nice area to where you could go if it's like, you know, nice and wet out or something. I don't really know. Just kind of making up excuses for myself for really making this, making the decisions that I make. And you know what? Totally fine to do that when you build. So, making our way throughout here and making sure that that area is sectioned off as well. Making sure that, you know, we don't have any overlapping roof pieces up there where porcupines can escape. As well as making sure that these kind of like beams make sense logistically so i have a few of them kind of set up over there to support the roof keep in mind it does snow in maine it snows a lot believe me i had to dig my car out several times up there uh so making sure that you are able to support a roof with as much sturdy beams as possible because it does snow a lot and we're on the ocean so we do get a lot and a lot of snow uh making sure that we're able to section that off is really important there as well and we're finally getting started on the climbing frames. Keep in mind, porcupines are excellent climbers, as I've said many times before. So we really just want to make sure that we kind of create as many places for these guys to climb as possible. So we do like a little jungle gym for them. It's really cute. Really love all the different pieces that we use in here. I was just thinking to myself a few days ago, I have not really used those bridge pieces in so long. So I finally figured, you know what, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to use as many as possible. So I start to do that all over there. And I do a whole bunch of different mixed climbing frames. I combine, like, natural ones. I combine, like, you know, uh, man-made ones. So you can see me start to line that up right there. And I really want to make sure that these guys could climb in and outside of their habitat uh, from the indoor to the outdoor. Now, keep in mind, the North American Porcupine mod, it is based off of the beaver. Frazzle made it. It is a beautiful mod. But unfortunately, it doesn't climb like a porcupine, so we kind of have to make do with what we have. Unfortunately, it's something that does need to happen, you know, utilizing rigs that look better for the animal than for functionality. But still, they look really good nonetheless, and I'm very happy with them. So we kind of make these habitats look as beautiful and as populated as possible. And I have a couple different climbing frames over here. Not really sure if you guys would even want these. They're relatively simple to make on your own. But we kind of angled that one down a little bit more and we get started on the actual foliage and decoration of the habitat right here as well. So I do a lot of stuff, be it working with some rocks and pebbles and stuff that keep them like, you know, away from certain areas. Maybe it's just gravel or something. Maybe it's a little bit more of a rocky habitat, who knows. Uh, but we also do a lot of grass work in here, so you can already guess what I'm going for. Yep, you got it, my trusty periwinkle grass. So I go through the habitat with a lot of that stuff. 
uh, and making it look really beautiful. And yeah, we also use some of the new conservation foliage pieces as well. Really happy with these pieces. Oh my gosh, they help bring a section out so much better. So we kind of go through and make that look all nice and pretty. And we add some smaller shrubs as well, making sure that it feels nice and, uh, I don't know, nice and naturalistic. Keep in mind this section is kind of based off of like a little bit of an abandoned logging town. So the animals have kind of taken over all these respective areas. So that's kind of what we have going on throughout here as well. And we finally get started on the interior as well over here. So we make it look nice and pretty. And we give them enough climbing structures in here as well. If you guys have ever seen like, um, I don't know, South American porcupine habitats, like Brazilian porcupine or curly-tailed porcupines, they're often found in habitats kind of like this, especially if they're in roadside zoos. Granted, Hope Harbor Zoo is not really a roadside zoo. We do have a little bit more of a bigger budget, so we are working with a lot more resources that come into play. So we do have a little bit more advantage to make this habitat look a little bit more pretty. Uh, but of course, for the interior, I didn't want to go too ham with theming. I feel like it would just take away from the fact that it is an interior. And I also do add a couple of doors in there as well. We have a couple extra storage rooms in there. Maybe later down the line we can add some like decorations to there. But we are about to enter the cinematics. Adding some smaller decorations in the forms of like, you know, hoses and baskets and stuff like that but thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it here's our beautiful little habitat from above we have a few different cinematics in this little episode over here so i do want to thank you guys for stopping by hope you guys enjoyed this quick little episode hope it was really nice and entertaining because these guys really are such awesome creatures but thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate you guys stopping by if you did enjoy it be sure to drop a little like you don't have to but i really do appreciate it maybe even drop a comment about it if you want what's your favorite porcupine exhibit let me know but thank you guys so much for watching can't wait to see you guys in the next episode take care and as always have the most wonderful of wonderful days bye bye now